first place. I felt that all gaps were not created equal. I felt that all strategies weren't, that all setups weren't. All setups aren't created equal. All setups aren't, all gaps aren't, they're just not, okay? There's sometimes when it, it counts to be more aggressive and you can take more risk. Therefore, the R thing is, 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 a, is, is kind of erroneous. Okay, if I decide that I'm really into something, I'll add in it and be doubling my price and then so or doubling my risk. And so then it's hard for me to say, well, I'm making this many hours per month. I think you ought to look at the size of your account, and it's different if you have a retail account or a prop account, and go from there and make the determination. Like let's just say you have a five thousand dollar, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. Let's just say you have a five thousand dollar prop account and say somebody gives you a hundred BP, because they know you can trade or something like that. You should be able to make five thousand dollars with a $5,000 account with 100 BP. And that's not, that's not insane. Now you do have to be good, but that's not like the best month you'd ever have. And if you're like not great, you should at least be able to make two or three. So you should be able to make 50% of your money, your cash money on a prop account with that. Now, if you have a, you have a retail account and you have 25,000 and you have 100 BP, you know, you're still looking to make 5,000 on the 25 with 100 BP. See what I'm saying? On an average month, I'm averaging it. That's not a fantastic month, that's like an average month because you gotta average it throughout the year. So you wanna start making more, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have to become a better trader, you're gonna have to build up your account, you're gonna have to have more buying power and with more buying power you can take more risk. Because the bottom line is if you have $100,000 buying power and 5,000 in account, you cannot risk more than $500 a day. And I think if you have $25,000 account and $100,000 BP in a retail account, I still don't think you should risk more than $500 a day. And if you do, then you better be good, all right? Because you have to keep your accounts intact. You have to keep your accounts intact until you can prove to yourself that you can do it. When do you know you can do it? After two months, after three months, after six months, you can do it, then you up your risk, okay? Then you say, I can do it and you're controlled. And the days that there's no good gaps, you don't train. And the days that text doesn't work out, you stop. You know, you prove to yourself that you can keep yourself under control. And you'd be surprised how your results can turn can turn out to be so, you know, terrific. And I'm, and I'm not gonna give you guys numbers because I don't want people to get nuts. I really, really, really think people need to learn it. And after you learn it, then you can get nuts, okay? The most important thing is just making sure you take good quality trades. And if you do, the number of hours you make per month will be there. Mine is, is skewed, okay, because I sometimes take more risk in my trades than one R when I do an ad, but I'm doing ads different than anybody else out there. I'm doing an ad on a confirmation. On Lulu, I didn't do the ad. On the first day, if I had, I would have doubled my risk. I wanted to hold Lulu into a bigger number, and I did a great job doing that the first day. If I'd done the ad, I would have risked two R's or more than that, where the stop had to be, and then I probably would have booked half into a drop, I would have made more money on the day, but I'm not sure if I would have held as much as I did into the target. <laughs> I don't think I would have gotten out as late as I did. I was so comfortable in holding. So it's a, it's a, it, you're, I'm constantly back and forth with this myself, you know? But I've been doing a good, better job holding these things lately, and it has paid. And I've been more relaxed in my trading. Now I was a little bit too relaxed today in Lulu. What are you gonna do? Um, sorry, hold on. I didn't bring up the jiggy. Here, here it is. Can everybody see this? So yeah, it's 100% possible that you could, I mean, this funny thing is that 10% a month is, is a great return as a trader. In a money market, you're earning one, okay? But with $100,000 buying power, for you to make, you know, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 a month, that's, that's not insane. That's not insane at all. That's perfectly reasonable, okay? But you have to look at the same thing with a $25,000 account because you got the same BP if you're at a retail place, it's four to one. That's, that's not even a big month, okay? So you have to learn how to do it. I think the issue is that people have a problem with self-control. They are too impatient. And this is what we're gonna talk about today. HRL, is it working? Hold on. What a great example of conviction. I mean, I did have conviction that it was going to hold 39, and I was absolutely right. All right, just let it run. Somebody tell me when it breaks the low of the day, because that I do have to, uh, I have to look at that then to maybe get out if it doesn't break. Just somebody, can somebody tell me that, please? 
Yeah. You could have you could have done a new tray. I gave you the number. You had a thousand minutes to take it. Under 80, stop over 39.05. It was a clean trade. All right, so wonderful. Let's get talking here. Let me know when HRL breaks the low of the day. Otherwise, let's just close our eyes. Summer trading. Summer trading, this is what we're going to talk about today. Obviously, everyone knows me. My name is Melissa Armo. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can go to YouTube and watch any of my videos there. I'm a little bit behind on videos, but I, I did post some yesterday. And you can also go and add me to your Skype or LinkedIn. So summer trading is a good topic. Why? Well, it's summer. It's a great time to talk about summer trading. We're in the thick of it. Today is June 18th. We're past Memorial Day. Not quite July 4th, but July 4th is kind of like getting into the middle of summer. So we're almost through the halfway point of summer. And so this is really summer trading right now. What we're dealing with here today, you know, trying to look for things and look for things and look for things and pick and pick and pick them. There was a million gaps this morning and I said hardly anything was good. This is summer trading. But you know what? The good thing about summer trading is it teaches you a lesson. You should really be like this all the time. You should be picky all the time. Summer trading or no summer trading, it's good to be picky no matter when you're trading. Summer is a glorious time of the year. It really is. It's actually my favorite season. I really uh, love it. It's great to be outside and enjoy the weather. Summer is also a great time to enjoy being a trader. Why? One of the advantages of being a full-time trader is you can enjoy your summer days every afternoon. Okay, I don't trade in the afternoon typically. And you should be done in the morning. And you can enjoy your life and the weather and being outside. So it's like one of these perks. There's people that have jobs that are stuck in offices, you know, and it's beautiful at 80, 85 degrees in the summer. You can go to the pool. You can go lay out. You can go get a tan. You can go to the beach. You can go do whatever you want to do. Go fishing. Go golfing if you're a trader. you got to be successful. you got to make your money. you got to make it in the morning. And how, what are you, how are you going to do that with gaps? But it's a great lifestyle, actually, at this time of the year. It's, you know, when the weather is cold outside in the middle of the winter, and if you want to be inside and take some trades in the afternoon, it's not like that that big of a deal. But, you know, being a trader, it's great because you can be done and go enjoy. I remember having a job and working and, you know, the weather be nice. All you have to do is sit outside and stare. You can't leave. You got to do your job. You have to work. Trading, you're done. You're done in the morning. It's a nice life. So you can go to the pool. You can go enjoy your life like this guy. How do you get to this point? You have to learn how to trade to make money to support yourself. And this has to be the goal. Because this is a lot nicer lifestyle to go lay in an inner tube like this guy in the middle of the afternoon of the summer and enjoy your life, okay? Which is what, you know, we're supposed to be doing. Not working like a crazy people 70 hours a week. And we're supposed to be enjoying our life. I mean, I think that's the reason I was drawn to trading in the first place is because I was working a job where I was working an insane amount of hours. I was working seven days a week. I never had a break. I just, you know, you get to a point where you've had it. And trading, you've got to get to that point. Okay, but that is the goal. And that's one of the reasons to keep staying motivated, to keep doing it, to keep sticking with it, is the lifestyle, the sheer lifestyle that it brings that you don't have to punch a clock every day. Not only can you have an unlimited potential for income, but you also can have a nice lifestyle, not working like crazy, working when you choose, working in the morning and stopping. And I'm running the room every day and I'm here till noon, okay? But I wasn't, I, you know, didn't trade till noon until I started the room. Now I'm doing the room, but I would be done many days by 10, 10, 15, 10, 30. So why do some people not like to train during the summer? Some people do not understand summer trading. If you understand how summer trading works, you can and should trade. Summer trading can offer some of the best setups you will ever get all year. Here was last summer. Here's some of the gaps that happened last summer. Look at these things. This is big. This was in August, in the middle of August. It's August 23rd. People talk about the summer doldrums. No, no, no. Stuff happens in the summer, just like every other time of the year. Here was, here was another one here. Look at this. It was in the beginning of August. This is big. Beautiful, nice gaps and moves in the summer, summer of 2012. This is Crocs. Crocs had this beautiful fall off here with this gap, and then it fell on through here. This was in July. Beautiful, nice, bearish move that it had, and this one too, down into the end of July. And this was GES. Look at this one. This was in August too. 
really nice gap, fought, fell in hard and fell on through, had huge momentum when August, in the middle of August. And this one here was the beginning of August. This is ECCH. This was huge. Look at the size of this bar. It's like $4. And all this happened in the summer. You can see the dates down here. And QCOR, I already talked about this. This was the one that I wanted to mention. This thing happened here in July. I didn't trade any of this, but I watched it. And I actually called it. This was the high of the stock for, for forever. I said I said that last summer when I saw this bar here. And it's still it still hasn't gotten over it. I don't know what it's doing now, but that was a year ago. And then this happened. And talk about, you know, people wanted to buy it in here right after this. Look what it did. It got down again after it. Whew. So all of this was going on in the summer. This thing is falling off a cliff all in the summer. So you have to understand the seasons. Everything has a season, even the market. The market has earnings seasons instead of nature seasons. Okay, that's the difference. Earnings season for third quarter company reports happens in the summer. Earnings season drives summer trading. And it drives my trading all the time, every quarter of the year. One, two, three, four. It drives my trading because I trade gaps. But really, it helps to drive stocks in general to get the momentum and also with the market. So here is a chart of the market last summer. Look. This was June, July, and August of last summer. Look at the nice, nice long bars. Some biggies in here. And I just want to show you, look at this thrashing around the market did last summer. This is a cues. First of all, there were gaps all over the place, big red bars, and all of this is happening in the summer. As a trader, you're making money on what? You're making money on vol volatility. And the earnings season brings volatility. And there was volatility in the market last summer in the way that it traded. And that presents opportunity for you as an individual trader to make money. Now, if you're a core trader, you may not like volatility. It may give you a headache and you may not be able to sleep at night. But if you know how to read charts, you should still be okay in your positions. But, but earning season for an individual trader, an individual person, is, is, is exactly what you want. Because otherwise, how are you making money? You know, there's, there's some days, what was it? There was one day last week, I don't remember when it was. <laughs> I, it felt like the market was asleep or something. So, and that, and the market actually tends to be like that sometimes around the holiday. Probably be like that, like the day before July 4th and the day after, just because of the holiday and the market's closed. But, you know, typically, earnings season brings volatility in stocks in the market, and that means opportunity for you as one individual to make money. That's how you're going to do it. So, the third quarter earnings season starts in July. It starts with AA. It's like July 8th. AA comes out. I don't know why this company starts their earnings every quarter. I have no idea. Here's the chart of AA. So it's the week after the 4th, the Monday after the 4th, AA reports on the 8th. Okay. And that's the start of the swing of the whole things. And it all lasts six to eight months. And so it's all July, all into August, into the Labor Day period. And some, there's a few into the beginning of September. So the advantage of trading seasons is that you get a chance to train stuff with volume with momentum, with movement, with volatility, and you get little breaks in between. And there's nothing wrong with that, just like you get little breaks in between the seasons. Like there was a little break where it seemed like it was cold here in the Northeast between, it was like it was summer finally get a break, it was like it was cold, it was cold at night, and it felt like spring and it was into May, and finally summer broke, and now it's at summer's here and it's hot. So these little tiny breaks that you get in between the seasons that we're kind of having now into the, we're going to have a little teeny weeny break in between until July 8th. It's take what you can get, whatever the goodies are. And it gives you a chance to relax a little bit into yourself, into your trading to do what? To make some improvements. Summer is a great time to make improvements in your trading. First of all, you, you mentally should be 100% relaxed. You should be totally you know, in a relax, the, the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining, you know, you, maybe you're getting ready to go on a vacation with your family, you know, people typically tend to go on vacation in the summer, it's a great time to be happy and enjoy life, and even enjoy your trading, why? It gives you a chance to take a step back and make some improvements, because when else are you going to do it? You know, life is so busy, weekends are busy, you're not going to do it in the fall, it's Halloween, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's busy, all the stuff, you know, summer is a time, that you can take some time for yourself. Take a couple days. 
figure out your trading, make some improvements, work on your trading plan. Remember, a trading plan is basically just a business plan for your trading. That's basically what it is. And the funny thing is, people trade without a trading plan, they may as well just start a business without a business plan. It's the same thing. You've got to have goals, you've got to have monetary goals, you have to have the trades that you're supposed to be doing, the strategy, all the things. This is something that I've been thinking about, although I haven't had time to situate it for the room, that maybe I'll put something and we can work on this in the summer in between in some of the days. I haven't had time to put it together yet, though. If I do, we'll, we're going to do it. If not, we'll do it some point later. I, I do think that people need a trading plan besides my class. Even though my class is one, you should still have your own single one written down on a piece of paper. It only could be one sheet, and it does have to have your monetary risks on it. And how many trades you're going to take per day. This is the kind of thing you can work on in the summer to make improvements. And also study your charts. This trade I called on Lulu that day that I called on the 14th, I highly doubt that anybody called that but me. I had to go back and look at it myself to see what I saw in the moment. This is the time to go back and study your charts. I'm behind in studying my own charts. I'm behind in my snagits. I got to catch up that with that this week, actually. Okay, I realized that over the weekend. Geez, I'm behind in my snagits. This is the time to study your charts. Go back, snag it, your gaps, snag it, your trades. Keep them, print them out, study them, see where the setups were. If you didn't see the setup I saw, go back and look and see what did she see in that setup? How did she, what, where was the stop supposed to be? All right, this is a time to study. And specifically when you're studying, you got to study the entries. Because, you know, even if you, after you learn the gaps, you got to learn the entries too. And this is something that you do have to study and it's something that you'll have to study forever. It's not like you ever get to the point where you know everything. I don't know everything. I know a lot about what I do, but I don't know everything. But every day, there's something else, something else, something else, something else to learn. And in fact, Tex was a good example yesterday. Tex was a good example yesterday where I saw that flip and I so solidly called that long then, you know, come on. So, you know, there's never a point where you know everything. You will always be in this flow of improving and becoming a better trader over time. And the summer is a nice time to take the time to relax and study the stuff. Because there might be some days you get up in the morning, there isn't anything to do. And you can go back to bed, go to the gym, or work on your trading plan and study your charts. And also, I think it's important to review your results. You know, sometimes, at least me, at least me, because I'm so critical of myself, I tend to be overly critical of myself and constantly want better results for myself, constantly pushing myself, pushing myself, pushing myself. I don't give myself enough credit. I try to, I'm trying to get in a better place where I'm giving myself more credit, okay, because my results are very good. I think that if your results are really good, you got to go back and look yourself and give yourself credit. And if results are not good, I want you to go back and figure out why. What the heck am I doing wrong? Am I trading days when I know there's nothing to do? I got to stop doing that. If I just took out that lost day that there was nothing to do, then I would have doubled my amount that I made in the month because every single day I shouldn't have done anything. There were terrible lost days for me, you say to yourself. So go back and look at your results. Or maybe you're not holding trades to target. I know some people have a hard time doing this. I've been talking to people about this in the room. You know, there are people that haven't gotten these big, these big rundowns. They quit out and get out of them too soon. You've got to try to hold something, something into these bigger numbers. It's going to make a big difference by the end of the month for you to pay yourself getting these types of runs. So go and look back. Everybody has a different situation. It may be you're holding too long, and maybe you're not holding long enough, and maybe you're over trading, and maybe you're doing too many symbols. You know, that's another thing. My best results are one ticker in the jiggy, not many. So typically, if you go back and you say, gosh, I traded five symbols today, and look how much I lost or my commissions, and then go look at the one where you had one or two, you probably did a lot better. First of all, less commissions less trains, and better results. I mean, there's a reason that less is more with trading. You're in something that's good, it's working, you're playing it out, so there's no reason for you to do 10 million things. Okay, why? Because your goal every day is to, to make profit. Your goal every day is not to trade until the bell. Your goal every day is not to trade like a crazy person. Your goal is to do your strategy when it sets up and hits play at the hardest and the best and the strongest that you can if you meet that requirement, if you meet that goal, you're doing it. Your head and shoulders above a lot of people, that is the only thing you're supposed to do. It's not like if you have some huge day and then you should trade all day then because you know what you're going to do? Give it back. 
So don't do that. And if you tend or have to sit and watch something because you want to write it down to a target, you're still managing it down, lowering the stop and monitoring the trade. And it doesn't mean you should sit there looking for other trades to do while you're in the one trade that's ready up because you could tend to be too overactive, all right? Particularly, and you don't want to get like that in the summer. How is the HRL doing here before I look? No, it didn't break yet. All right. It's fine, though. Okay, somebody let me know when that breaks the low of the day. So the other time thing to do in the summer is what? Review your risk, okay? If you are not seeing the monetary results you want to see, part of it could be is that your risk is not correct. In other words, let's just say that you're actually doing well. Okay. And you're like, gosh, you know, I should be making more money. I, I can't, I can't see anything. You're really like, yeah, I could hold things a little bit more, but honestly, I'm doing pretty good. If I look at the amount I'm risking and the amount then that I'm making, this is, this is actually good. Maybe you can risk a little bit more. Maybe you could actually start to risk a little bit more. All right. And typically what I tell people is to go a little bit more, not double it, like 20, 30%, a little bit, bump it up. Not even, not double it initially. Okay. So you could take a little bit more risk then. You could say, I think I'm going to take a little bit more risk here in the summer or the fall. Things are going well for me. Now, if you get to the point where you realize that you're not seeing the results you want to see, that you're either down or you're flat or you're break even or only up a little bit, or you can't even pay yourself after the cost of commissions, you say, wait a minute, obviously I have to make some changes here. I'm not doing something right. I'm over trading until I get this situated within myself, I'm going to lower my risk. Now, why would you do that? You obviously, if you lower your risk, there's a problem. You need to make the fix. But the reason to lower your risk would be what? To keep your capital intact, okay, until you situate the problem. First of all, find what the problem is that you're having that you're not getting the results. And second of all, fix it. And you need to give yourself time for that. And it isn't going to happen overnight. So you have to preserve your capital. If there's a problem and you're losing, or you're flat, or you're only up a little, lower your risk. Lower your risk until you figure out what the heck you're doing wrong. You know, or ask me about it, because there's something going on. And if you've been taking my calls in the room and you're not up, you 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 know, you, you gotta figure out what's going on. It's you know, you're doing other stuff then. And you gotta you gotta go back and fix the problem. Or you're not holding. So then you should lower your risk. Why? because you haven't synced it yet. You haven't made the connection yet. You're not in the groove. You've got to get in the groove and you want your account to stay intact. You need that account. That's what's going to get you through. Okay. And you don't want to have to keep refunding your account through, through mistakes. So give yourself a chance to ease into it, work into it, get into a groove with the trading, with the gaps, with everything you're doing. And if you find you're not where you want to be, then you could lower your risk during the summer when you look at your trading. That may be something you want to do. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. That's showing a business-like attitude. Let's just say someone sells, what would they sell? I'm trying to think of something. Uh, I don't know. They sell a certain type of product, okay? And the ice cream, ice cream. It's an ice cream place, okay? It's ice cream. They sell ice cream. They're open 12, year, 12 you know, months a year. They decide they're going to cut costs and expenses in the winter months. They, they, they lower the hours for employees. There's no overtime. Everybody goes down to 25 hours a week. They don't want to pay any benefits, not, not during the winter. So they're, they're lowering their costs as a business during the period when the time is slow. For you as a trader, you have to lower your costs during the time when you're having difficulties. And how do you know you're having difficulties? You'll know. You should be honest with yourself. If you're not seeing the results you want to see, then there's a difficulty that's in there that you haven't dug into to figure it out yet. It could be something metal. It could be something to do with your trades. Either way, you got to find it. So lower your risk until you find the problem and nail it on the head and then fix it. It's just the same thing if you had a business. You wouldn't have all the full-time employees for an ice cream business 12 months a year. You get the extra people in, the summer help. They help you in the summer. That's when you spend the money to have the employees. Okay, again, just like a business plan. So summer will have some rest days. You can go out on the lawn, lay out and get a tan. There's going to be days in the summer where there's nothing to do. Here I am, now I'm doing the room. I'll be here every day till noon no matter what. But there's just some days I say, gosh, you know, you guys go to the beach. 
honestly, summer will have some rest days. Days where there's nothing to do and there's nothing wrong with that. Why? It's summer. It's summer and it'd be nice to have a day off. You can go outside and lay outside and just lounge around. And then summer will have some small days. JCP was a small day that happened last week. It was a chunk and it worked like two days, but it wasn't any, like some dream gap. Okay, it worked. Actually, actually worked better than expected on Friday. I didn't, I didn't get this whole thing. Um, but it was a nice, easy trade with a clear, clear path, clear setup, clear stop, clear everything. It was clean, it was what I call clean. And it actually went more than I thought on the day. And it was a nice small day in the summer and a Friday. Okay. And then summer will have some really big days, which is Lulu. Okay. Which is Lulu. And we're going to lay off Lulu for now, but Lulu still has the potential to pay us again here in the summer. I don't know when. Lulu is going to get to 62. Lulu is going to get to 60. I just don't know when until I see it. But, you know, these are the kind of things that come unexpectedly out of nowhere in the middle of June and you get Lulu. And there was lots of times to short this in here. If you watch it every single day, which I, I've been doing, you know, just waiting for it to break and go on through to the bigger number. I mean, this, this kind of thing like this, you don't get all the time. And when you get something like this, it's so amazing. And you know it's going to fall through and didn't get to the bigger target. It's worth your time and energy to watch it. And even trade it like we looked at today. And if it doesn't work the day and it's not ready to break, it doesn't even matter. Because if you go after that thing and watch it and stalk it and get it and watch it every day until it breaks, the day that it breaks, you're going to get hugely rewarded. Okay? So, summer will have some really big days. Infi, Lulu, and maybe FDX tomorrow. I guess we'll have to see. There is going to be some other ones that are biggies between now and before the end of the month. I know it. I just don't know when or what FDX has the potential tomorrow. So what is your job as a trader in the summer? Well, really, it's the same as any time. But I have to remind this to people because sometimes they forget in the summer. You have to find the opportunity. You have to trade the opportunity fearlessly. No fear. Press it. Do it. Boom. And do not trade when there is no opportunity. This is the most important thing. I think this is the most difficult thing for people to do. They constantly, constantly, constantly want to trade like it's like it's Pac-Man. Actually, Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man was my favorite video game. I loved Miss Pac-Man. Me and my dad would go play Miss Pac-Man for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours at the arcade when I was a little girl. You just want to keep playing Miss Pac-Man. This isn't Miss Pac-Man. This is your money. This is trading. This is a job. This is a job. And, and if it doesn't feel like a job yet to you switch the on button in your head that it's a job. And the problem is until you start paying yourself, it's hard to feel like it's a job, but you got to switch the on off button to on job button before you pay yourself or you're never going to get to the point to pay yourself. You know what I'm saying? The on button for job has to be boom, turned on. And that means do not trade when there's no opportunity. It means find the opportunity every morning if you can. And it means when you find it, trade it fearlessly. Now there's a difference between waiting for the setup and trading fearlessly. Do you understand the difference? There's a difference. Stuff didn't set up right this morning, so I wasn't aggressive. If it had, I would have been aggressive. And to be honest with you, the trade that I did in Lulu was aggressive. You know, but, you know, I was up and I just didn't take it off. It's just one of these things, though, that you have to be able to spot opportunity. And I think that as a trader, as an individual, as a person, we were talking about this yesterday, actually. You, when you get to the point where you're really learning how to do this stuff, you got to recognize what's good, and you also have to recognize what's crap so you don't do the crap, so you don't get sucked into doing stuff that's crap. Because sometimes crap is disguised as a pretty, pretty thing, and it's really crap. Do you know what I'm saying? And until you get up close to it and or you're in the trade, then you realize it's crap and it's too late, <laughs> and, you're, and you're already in it. you got to see it before it. You have to show up for work every day as a trader. Even in the summer, you've got to show up. But it's no big deal. You don't have to dress up in a suit and tie. You're sitting at your desk. You do have to be there every day because you never know when you're going to get the goodies. You have to show up and look for them. If you don't show up and look for stuff to do, you're not going to get it. And you have no idea when you're going to get it until you show up for work and look. You have to show up for work every day as a trader, even in the summer, even during the summer period. You've got to focus in the summer. Focus, although I think you should focus all the time anyways, you just got to make sure that stuff is really there. Make sure you're not missing anything. And have discipline in the summer. Again, you should have discipline all the time anyways, but remind yourself of this in the summer particularly because there will be days where you should probably not trade or do anything, typically around the holiday period. 
this is something that takes practice. Some people struggle with this. And it's just one of these things, though, I think once you pass the point of no return, that you're actually in a groove where you are disciplined over weeks and weeks and months, once you get to that point, uh, actually, I think you're past the point of no return. You won't know that until you're actually past the point of no return. I think that this is something that people struggle with at the beginning. They're on and off and back with this in between periods of the trading. But once you get into a groove and you're really doing it, you'll, you'll get to a point someday where you're past the point of no return. And then you just don't do silly things anymore like take silly trades or trade in the afternoon or give money back. But you're in such a, you're so, you're in such a groove and have so much confidence and conviction in yourself that you actually don't feel like being disciplined is work. You feel like it's just what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to do all the time anyways. And you should have never thought of it as something that you wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you go to the casinos and you take 500 bucks. You say, this is it. I got 500 bucks. That's it. I'm going to enjoy myself, have a good time. If I lose the $500, it was money that I spent on entertainment for the weekend. I went, I went on a little vacation. You don't go to the ATM then. If the $500 is gone by, you know, midnight on Friday night, you're there all weekend in AC. That's it. You, the, 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 your entertainment budget is, you're done with it. You didn't make it, okay? You don't go to the ATM there at the casino and get more. You have to have discipline. And no afternoon trading in the summer. Really, I'm serious about this. I don't trade in the afternoon anyways, but summer is definitely not time you want to trade in the afternoon. The market will tend to pitter off. People do go on vacation. People do go out and do stuff. People have meetings. People do other things, okay? It's really not the time to be trading at all. I don't like to trade in the afternoon no matter what time of the year. It's different if you're up money in something and you want to write it down to a target, put in lower the stop. But it's not a good idea to enter new trades in the afternoon. It's just not, it's just not a good thing to do. So remember that. Summer is also the time for a vacation. It's good to take time off work. And if trading's your job, it's work when you do it. It's good to take a vacation, whether it's for a long weekend or a week, or some people even take two weeks off if they're lucky. It's, you know, it's nice to take a vacation in the summer and enjoy the outside and, and enjoy being with your family or whoever you want to go on a vacation with or even go by yourself just to take some time off work in the market. But don't take too much time off. I have to remind people of this, and, and I have to remind myself of this too. You know, if you spend too much time away from the market or your charts or your, or your trading, you'll get out of the nice groove you're in if you're in one. So just don't take too much time off. You know, some people want to take the whole summer off. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea at all, okay? Uh, you know, a week, a little bit more than a week, but you start taking like three, four weeks, a month off, several months off, you're going to come back and you're going to be out of, out of the groove. And then you're going to have to kind of get back into the groove again. And that means lowering your risk and not even risking as much as you normally would. You're going to have to get situated again back into your routine. So don't take too much time off, although it's nice to take a break in the summer. And also keep yourself motivated. Keep yourself motivated throughout the days when you had only a small day or a rest day. You got to keep yourself motivated. You don't know when the next Lulu is going to come. You have no idea if FDX is going to work. You don't know, but you keep yourself motivated. How do you do that? Friends, family, a teacher, a book, the market, money, a quality trading room, which I offer, or even a mentor, which I've become for people too. You know, you, you've got to stay motivated so that you don't find yourself getting off track. You don't want to get off track, especially if you're on track. It's great to be on track. So don't let yourself get on track just if there's a couple of days when the things don't run, you know, big. And HRL is a good example. In fact, where is it at right now? All right. It's looking good. But whether or not that works or not today to go to the bigger number, well, we're going to stay motivated. Stay motivated to get up tomorrow, look for something good tomorrow, and so on and so forth. And even if, even if HRL hadn't have worked and FDS failed, I would still be motivated to do what? To do FDX tomorrow, if it sets up. So use whatever resources you can to keep yourself motivated to trade each day and each week. And having a good support system is key. A trading room that has a positive influence on you can keep you motivated, which I like to think that mine is. You know, I know there's a lot of rooms out there, but I do my best to, number one, motivate myself, <laughs> okay? Number one and for most, most importantly, and then also the people that are trading with me. And friends and family can be a great motivation for you as well because they want you to make it. They want you to do this. They want you to make the money. This is an amazing thing. How proud it is for your spouse or your kids or, or, or whoever 
to say that they know a professional trader. I'm sure your family is bragging about it, you know? They're bragging about you that you're doing this if you're doing well. Because there's not that many people that can do this terrifically. I mean, really. And then you'll find your friends and family are asking, what do you think about this? What do you think about the market? What do you think? And it's a nice feeling. So help use the friends and support of the love of your family to help you stay motivated in these times when you may have to take a few days off in between here and there when there isn't any of your strategy setups. And when you need motivation, you have to look at the bigger picture. Making money trading is about the bigger picture. It always has been. It always was. I wish someone would have reminded me that at the beginning for myself. It absolutely is a bigger picture. This is something you want to do for the long haul, not for a dink. There are 200 trading days in the year, and you don't know when the good ones will happen. You absolutely don't, okay? But you must be present. You must be disciplined. You must be focused in order to get them. You must have an account. You must be trading. You must have your risk in place. You must stick to the game plan. You can't lose two days in a row because you didn't do the right thing. You get a great setup in something, you take it off quickly and get out the whole thing because you just want to get green from the trades that you did the other day that you shouldn't have done in the first place because you weren't supposed to trade in the afternoon. And then the stock goes on and runs $5 and you could have had a huge week and you didn't get any of it. You've got to follow what you're supposed to do every day. Every day. And you've got to look at the bigger picture. Why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you want to support your family? I don't know. I don't know why you're doing this. Me, I want to support myself, so I'm my own family. I'm a family. Me, it's one. So my bigger picture is supporting me, myself, and maybe someday a family want to have it, but right now I'm a family. One. One is the family for me. And the bigger picture for you may be the same thing, or maybe you're doing this part-time for some other reason. Maybe you have a short-term goal. You want to try to make extra money because you don't have extra money with your regular job to, to kind of go on lavish vacations, buy like a second home maybe you want to have like a timeshare, something like that. So you may have some short-term goals while you're doing this trading until you make a career change full on, which is just extra money for some extra things that you don't have right now that you want, just to have like a better quality of life. And of course, your long-term goal may be something else. You want to buy a bigger house. You want to move to a different city. You want to do something else, okay? And so your long-term goal may be even bigger in nature than what you have right now for the short term. And then, of course, really long-term goals or future goals could be retirement. If this is what you're looking to do, this is a nice thing, even if you're retired. I mean, really, you could be retired and do this and trade for an hour and a day. I mean, seriously, that's still retired. You're done every day by 10 a.m.? Literally. And a lot of retired people actually do work part-time jobs, you know, just to have some extra money coming in on top of Social Security, whatever uh, retirement income pensions they have coming in. So to, to do this for a long-term future goal for retirement is not a bad idea either. And many people don't even have 401ks anymore. The way these companies are and the way the, the, the economy is, you may not have the savings, the IRAs, the 401ks for your retirement. So you may have to do this now so you have a retirement. You know what I'm saying? So you actually have the money there for you to even retire in the first place so you can ever quit your regular job, whatever it is, if it's not trading. You've got to look at the bigger picture. I tell people this, and you know what? Everything I went through myself, I, I'm telling you, it was for a reason now because I'm teaching people and I, everything I'm saying is true. When I started out, I did not have the bigger picture in mind. I just didn't, all right? And I wish that I would have. I had the bigger picture in mind as far as the, the career, but I wanted it now, 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 right now, right now, right now. I wasn't patient, okay? You've got to have the bigger picture in mind. So what to do in the summer? Don't give up on the market if you don't get a good play every day in the summer, okay? The market may want to just take a little rest here and there, too. It's the summer for the market. Trading and making money trading is about playing the odds correctly in your favor. If you do this over the course of a month, a week, and a year, you will make money by staying on track with your game plan. You've got to have that in place. Everything has its seasons, including the market. So don't start getting lazy with your trading in the summer. I, this is the point that I'm trying to make in today's lecture, all right? You must wait for the good ones. That is why having a rating system, which is what I do to pick stocks, is so great. This is why you have to keep yourself under control, the discipline, the focus. You have to stay motivated. If you don't, you will miss these good ones. People tend to get so impatient in the summer. Don't get tripped up by the seasons of the market. It's just part of the market. 
just like there's four seasons in 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 the Northeast or in some of the different places in the in, even even in Arizona. When I lived in Arizona, there were seasons. I know I know it sounds crazy, like there would be seasons in Arizona, but there was there were seasons there. They were they were not as evident, but there was seasons in Arizona. They were different than in the Northeast, but they were real. People have a hard time relaxing in summer trading. Relax. The market will always give it to you. I say this all the time. The market will give it to you. The market will give it to you. The best and the easiest and the most beautiful and the most fabulous days I've ever had, the market just gives it to me. It's like I could just roll out again and go boop. And the market gives it to me. When the market gives it to you, do it. That's why you have to learn how to trade fearlessly because you can't not take advantage of the days when the market gives it to you. And that's why you learn to hold these things, at least some of the trade, some of it, anything. I don't care. 20% hold down to the target. You've got to take advantage of the market when it gives it to you. And the market does give it to you. And you've got to have conviction that the market will give it to you. I don't know when. If I had a calendar and said, do, 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 these days come and trade on these days. We're going to have this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. Hey, I would do that. I'd only have the room up in those days. And then I'd take the rest of the days off. And you don't know. Okay? This is part of trading. Know and have the faith and have the confidence and have the conviction that the market's going to give it to you. Because it will. The very essence of the market, if you have a good strategy, is it gives you the strategy over and over and over again, enough to pay yourself each week, each month, and each year. I think the problem is that people lack confidence in what they're doing with their trading, that they then fail to believe that the market will give it to them. They feel like they have to force it. You will never get paid forcing it with the market. The market will rip the money out of your hand if you force trades. That's why you do it. You have a stop. If it takes you out, you back off. You pull yourself in. Wait a minute. Lulu just went over the high of the day. Oh, that's it's not going to work right today. FDS is rallying, rallying, rallying. Held 97 whole number. Nope, not going to work right today. Recognize the failures as much as the good ones so you pull yourself in because the market will give it to you plenty, plenty of times, more than enough times, and you got to have faith in that. I think if I had had faith at the beginning that the market was always there for me, um, you know, I would have had profit far before this point. I just kept pushing it, pushing it, and didn't believe that the market was going to give it to me as well as it could have, except for the fact that after a certain period of time, I realized, wait a minute, it, it is giving it to me. It is giving it to me. And when you go back and look at the days and count them all up, you just count them all up and the moves that they made, you recognize they give it to you. It gives it to you. And you just have to stick with it. So summer is a time for study and preparation. And it's nice to study in the summer. There's lots of trading books you can read. You can be, read some motivational ones. In fact, you can read some motivational books. If you want to email me, I'll give you some books that have nothing to do with trading, but will help you stay in a positive framework. And summer is a time for learning. It's a time for taking classes, whether it's a new class and a new strategy or something, you know, that you just want to improve on that you're already doing now, but you want to take it up to a further level and become more evolved. Keep the momentum going throughout the whole year. Do not stop trading in the summer. The summer can have some amazing, beautiful moves. How will you know? You won't unless you show up for work. So stick to the program. Don't deviate. Don't chase things. Don't force things. Don't become lack of discipline. Don't overtrade. Don't trade in the afternoons in the summer. Stick with the program. Get up and look for stuff that's good. When it's good, the market will give it to you. Trading is about consistency and longevity. Yeah, honestly, if you want to make it, I don't care if your goal is retirement, full-time career, part-time career, vacation home, anything. I don't care what it is in order to see the results of the money consistently. Okay. You've got to do something that works. You've got to produce the results. And if you want to produce consistent results, you've got to stick to your trading plan and you have to have one in the first place. And if you don't, my class is one, but you still need the money management. Okay. And you've got to stay with your trading, your strategy in the summer. You can't give up on your thing just because you're getting tired because you only got one Lulu this month or something. You have to be there every day. Stick with the plan. If you want to see the annual income results in your trading, you need to trade every season throughout the year. I think this is an important point to make. It sounds like, you know, you want to just take the every time off in between the earning season, but there's great gaps in non-earning season. This this last, you know, month there was. 
If you want to see the results that your strategy can produce to go back then in 2014 and say, I did this thing all of 2013. This is how much money I made. This is the results. Do I want to risk more now in 2014? You won't know if you didn't trade all year. You've got to trade all year and say, wait a minute, what is the potential that this is going to actually, how much money could I actually make doing this thing next year in 2014? You know, you've got to trade all year in order to be able to figure it out. I think you need at least one year under your belt to be able to see what kind of money you could make. And then, then you'll know. And then you'll know going forward into it, and you'll be able to figure it out if you want to risk more into the next calendar year and, and start to trade heavier. So results come with a plan of action, and everybody's got to have one. I, I have very, very detailed plan and very strict rules and things that I do, um, and, and some people do already. But still, this summer is the time you could go back and review it and see if you could make any changes, any improvements. You must, though, have a plan of action. You need a plan of action in place in order to be successful trading. I don't care if it's a sheet of paper right next to you, something, anything to remind yourself. You need a proven strategy and a system that works in order to make money trading, and you absolutely must follow this plan to achieve success. Once again, you can't deviate. So follow your plan and keep your eye on the bigger picture for the year for yourself of what trading can turn into for you, not just not just in the future, but this year, 2013. And when you have a clear vision, a clear intention, and a plan of action in place, you can succeed as a trader. I think this is something that I want to remind people in here that are working on it, they're working through the process, they're in the process. Use the time during the summer to do some goal setting for yourself. This way, you can create the trading results you desire. Get clear. Have complete clarity and focus. Focus on one or two stocks. Focus on one strategy. Focus by being in the Stock Swiss trading room if you're in here with me. All these things will help you get and stay clear and motivated during summer trading. So I'm doing a class. If anybody's interested, it's Thursday. The course is Wealth Manifestation and it includes one month in the Stock Swiss trading room. The cost is $3.99. It's June 20th from 1 to 4. It'll be after the room closes. And on Thursday, it's this Thursday. And the class includes one month in the room to get your feet wet. So you can see the gaps and be in here for a whole month and see if you like the course. The hours of the room are 8 to noon. It's a live trading room and I make the gap calls. It's a very focused trading room that plays gaps. And as you saw today, I call the entries and the targets and I review the market daily as well. And if anyone's interested as well, the gap class, the next gap class is going to be June 29th and 30th. And I focus on gaps in the room and the class I teach is all about gaps. And I had a bunch of people that contacted me like Friday night, Saturday morning. I was just too late to get them in for the class this weekend. So I committed to doing a class again in two weeks. So I'm doing it right before earnings season starts. It's a good time for people to do it and learn the information. The 29th and the 30th, I'm doing the next gap class. If you're interested, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. And if anyone wants to do retakes, you can do it then right then. That'll be the last class then before third quarter earnings season. So that's the time to learn it because then after the July 4th holiday, earnings season starts and we're going to be trading and we're going to be busy. We're going to be doing the gaps. So does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much for coming today. Does anyone have any questions about anything, anything at all? I mean, let's look at the, the HRL. Nobody said anything, so I'm guessing it didn't break the low of the day. Does anyone have any questions?